Behind the clean-cut steel and concrete lines of this ultra-modern industrial complex, it would come as no surprise to discover advanced automated equipment and computers at work. In every respect, it represents the changing face of our industrial landscapes. Today's architecture, housing tomorrow's technology. Even so, the purpose behind this greenfield development at Corby may well be somewhat unexpected, because it's one of only a handful of such processing plants in the world. The process is a new development in the world of tobacco manufacture. It's the result of a 21 million pound investment program by a subsidiary of Britain's third largest multinational company. BAT Industries. An investment that's made this Corby plant the focal point of a worldwide operation. Processing tobacco not only for BAT's major subsidiaries in the UK, Belgium, Holland, Finland, and Hong Kong, but for major cigarette manufacturers throughout the world. And the process it uses is undoubtedly one of the most important developments in the tobacco industry for decades. A new technology that has spawned its own terminology. The diet process. A revolutionary new tobacco process that produces lighter, milder cigarettes. Diet stands for dry ice expanded tobacco. In a nutshell, cut tobacco is soaked with liquid carbon dioxide under high pressure quick frozen by decompression, then heat expanded in a high temperature and high humidity dryer. The process itself isn't brand new, of course. We're all now familiar with freeze-dried instant coffee and instant potatoes. But the idea of adapting the process to expand tobacco is an exciting new development of this technology. The diet process offers the cigarette manufacturer three main benefits. The process of rapid freezing and rapid drying expands the tobacco to virtually double its size. When mixed with standard cup blends, expanded tobacco achieves better fill value, producing an equally firm but lower weight cigarette at a more competitive price. In addition, the process itself actually reduces the tar and nicotine percentages in the tobacco. So expanded tobacco is something of a breakthrough as a milder constituent for low tar cigarettes. Finally, although this isn't the only tobacco expanding process available, it is the only one that leaves no residues behind. By achieving both lower weights and a milder constituency, the diet process enables us to cater for the fast-growing demand for competitively priced, low-tar cigarettes. Good news for both manufacturer and smoker alike. A closer look at the diet processing plant in Corby will demonstrate how seriously British American tobacco regard the process. As you can see, They've been particularly careful to ensure that the plant harmonizes with its pleasant rural surroundings. Over 4,000 trees and shrubs have been planted in an extensive landscaping scheme. Equal care was also taken in the choice of location. Close to the M1 and M6 interchange, and 
well connected to the port of Felixstowe, it's ideal for a multi-factory, multi-company operation, geared for growth in an expanding international market. From start to finish, it's a highly automated process, designed to be competitive at least until the end of this century. And it's 99% British built, with each operation monitored and controlled by GEC process control computers. The process begins here, in these modern security warehouses. Capable of storing 3,500 tons of tobacco. From here, the 200 kilogram cases of lamina, as the raw leaf tobacco is called, are taken in 8,000 kilogram batches to the decasing line where the cases are automatically removed. But before it can be impregnated, the lamina undergoes a series of primary operations similar to those of a conventional cigarette factory. These prepare the incoming dried leaf for processing. These continuous conditioners open and moisturize the tobacco. Then, after passing over this moving screen to remove small particles, the lamina passes through a revolving primary cylinder which further moisturizes it. A casing may then be sprayed on the conditioned leaf to maintain moisture and control the flavor. Then, it's spread along this blending bin, rather like a giant layer cake. As it leaves the blending bin, it passes through a bank of revolving doffers producing an even and balanced mix. From here, the lamina is picked up and conveyed towards the cutting floor. There, it passes through a separator, magnetic metal detectors, and cutters, which cut the lamina. The cut tobacco then enters a second blending bin, after which it's batch weighed onto the conveyor, taking it towards the diet plant itself. Like any high technology manufacturing operation, the diet process is constantly monitored for maximum efficiency. From this advanced control room, strategically located by the carbon dioxide impregnators, a watchful eye can be kept over the entire process. By human eye, by remote control cameras, but mainly by computer. From the moment the lamina leaves the warehouse until it enters the dispatch area as expanded tobacco, the GEC process controllers monitor and control every stage of the operation. This automated control fascia gives a complete overview of the system. Each individual process is monitored by a zone controller, which accurately predicts and regulates the flow of tobacco to each part of the plant. The supervisors can home in and control any stage using this VDU and interactive keyboard. Meanwhile, on the line itself, the cut tobacco is entering the impregnators in 120 kilogram batches. During the impregnation process, extremely high pressures are involved. Even so, these impregnators are designed to safely withstand twice the pressures required. 
Once the impregnator lid is sealed, carbon dioxide gas is passed through the vessel to expel all the air. The pressure of the carbon dioxide gas is gradually increased to 30 atmospheres, at which point liquid carbon dioxide enters, thoroughly soaking and penetrating the tobacco lamina. Excess liquid carbon dioxide is drained off and the vessel is vented to a series of gas recovery systems. The rapid pressure drop causes the carbon dioxide to freeze to its familiar dry ice form inside and around the tobacco, which has now dropped to minus 80 degrees centigrade. During this 15-minute operation, vital recovery systems are at work, maximizing efficiency and lowering the manufacturing costs. The excess liquid carbon dioxide is returned to the process tank. The gases from the impregnator are vented into this cooled liquefaction vessel and into this giant flexible recovery tank. Then compressed back to 30 atmospheres and returned to the process tank ready for recycling. The cut tobacco, now frozen solid with dry ice, drops out of the impregnators and passes into an insulated holding bin. comes the process that leaves the tobacco in a pure but expanded state. It passes rapidly round this high temperature and high humidity drying loop. Fed by a mixture of air, carbon dioxide and steam at around 300 degrees centigrade. The sudden temperature rise causes the solid carbon dioxide to turn to gas, or sublime, as the scientists say. This sudden expansion puffs up the cells in the tobacco leaves, permanently expanding the tobacco to almost double its size. Although now expanded, the moisture content of the tobacco is low, so this reordering cylinder sprays the processed lamina with water restoring the moisture content to around a healthy 13%. The diet process is now complete. The result is pure, unadulterated, cut leaf tobacco, doubled in volume, but totally free of any process residues. A well-equipped quality control laboratory analyzes samples from each batch to ensure that BAT's exacting standards are met. Each batch is finally check weighed automatically packed in either plastic or cardboard boxes and conveyed to the dispatch warehouse. Bound both for BAT's own factories in Liverpool and Southampton, Europe, Latin America and the Far East, and a number of external customers throughout the world. What you have just seen is one of the most advanced and efficient tobacco processes in the world. Mixed with conventional cut lamina and stem blends, expanded tobacco offers the cigarette manufacturer lower tar and nicotine delivery and reduced manufacturing costs from increased fill value. In short, Expanded tobacco offers a really competitive edge in the modern cigarette market. And in an age of ever-increasing costs, duties and health awareness, 
that's welcome news for the smoker, too.